Toast high to go walking with the Rooney O, especially when the moon is over Phoenix Park. Why the air's exciting as he strolls along O'Connell Street. Who is he? All the ladies want to know. Oh, the dear sweet things would give anything. Got it to meet the brother of a boy from Dublin called the Rooney O. Rooney O, Rooney O. You said your heart is sinking in the twinkle of an eye. Oh, Rooney O. Soon come when a girl will marry Rooney O. Oh, all I hope is she love the make it fast on the day they ring out the wind bells for Rooney O. Oh, then Dublin will begin to have some peace at last. Rooney O, oh, Rooney O, oh, you said you had a singer in the twinkle of an eye. Rooney O, oh, Rooney O, oh, the darling of the ladies is the Rooney O. Oh. The dawn broke over the Irish Sea and shed its light on the fair city of Dublin. Everything was pretty much the same as it was the night before. Nelson's statue on O'Connell Street was still standing. The River Liffey was still flowing, as it always did. And those things essential to the life of a great city were already on their way to the consumers. <laughs> your tea, Mr. Rooney. It's all right, Mr. Rooney. It's only me. Sit up now and drink your tea. I don't like tea in bed. That's only because you're not used to it. What comfort is there in life for a single young fella knocking about from one lodging to another? It's lucky you were to find a haven here with me. I like to look after myself, Mrs. Wall. I've been doing it all my life. And now you're just deluding yourself, for you're as helpless as a newborn babe, in spite of being a fine figure of a man and a great player on the Hurley field. There's times, I'm sure, when you must feel awful lonesome. No, I'm not lonesome. I've got me dog. And a lovely, affectionate sort of creature he is, too. Wagging his tail whenever he catches sight of me. I'll be late for me work, Mrs. Wall. There's a thing you'd never be, Mr. Rooney, for you're one of the steadiest men I've seen in my life. Since my late husband got rest his soul. I want to get up, Mrs. Wall. I've only got my shirt on. What other way would a man sleep but in his shirt? And pajamas is all right for weedy young fellas. No expansion to their chests, and no muscles to be seen on them anywhere. Mrs. Wall, I must get up. Oh, well, I'll be going then. And while you're out, I'll scrub your lino and wash your curtains. Everything will be bright and shiny when you come home tonight. And a nice bit of supper waiting for us both. Until tonight, then. Thanks, my boy. If she comes in here again, you turn her hind leg off her. Shakes up, so no Wait there. Hello there. Uh, 
That's better. A smile from here to my lodgings. I did it under six minutes. Good. Wait till you have a wife and six little chiselers. Then you'll be running all nice as well. I pay no attention to that, but I really am in great form. You keep that up and you'll be playing in the final before the year is up. Ah, uh, no, Tim, no. Come on now, all aboard. Where to? Rat moins. Where to? Rat moins. Tea leaves and potato peelings. By the looks of their bins, you think the upper class has never got anything to eat at all. <laughs> Step. But you can't keep going on like this forever, you know. You've got to settle down one way or the other. Look, why don't you find a nice girl and marry her? Well, you married men are like teetotalers. You want everyone else to join in your misery. Uh, for a single man, you have more woman trouble than anyone I've ever heard of. What, what recommendation for marriage is this guy? Look, there's Joe. When she's not belting him with a fish, she's playing with a tongue. There's Ryan with six kids and never a penny to bless himself with. And as for poor Mickey... I know they're not all like that, you know. Uh, now, your one's the exception, Tim. My situation's desperate. I've got to get out tonight. Tonight? I'm not back to tunnel, Lord. And there's all that furniture of yours. Look, why don't you just sell it and go into proper lodgings? I, know, I wouldn't care to do that, Tim. I belong to my dad. It's all we had in the world. Well, we'll have to see what we can do. Although I'll take the oath here and there that after this, I'm not going to move you again. Thanks, Tim. Thanks. <laughs> Who's the big young fella just came in? I'm 
seen him somewhere before. Well, that's Rooney, Mr. Doolan. Works on the city corporation. Plays for the sons of Aaron. I know, that's where I've seen him. A strong, fast player. I've seen him once in the goal mode. With six men lying stricken at his feet. And the rest of them wondering whether they should run off the field or hoist the white flag of surrender. Bring him over to me. Yes, Mr. Doolan. Surely. Mr. Doolan would like a word with you, Rooney. Doolan? He's a great Hurland fan, and he's on the county selection committee. He'd like you to have a drink with him. I don't know. I'm not drinking anymore, thanks. I'll go on and at least have a word with a man. A strong, solid man is Doolan. A lawyer. His firm collects all the rents in the neighborhood. So you're Looney in the Southern Air. I wouldn't take your hand, sir. I, I'm just off the bins. A bit of dirt never harmed anyone. Sure as that would all made of an as that would return. You play next Sunday? Oh, I am, sir. I'll be there to watch you. Well, we're only a bit of a team, Mr. Doolan, you know. I'll be there. Excuse me, Mr. Doolan, sir. I see you talking to Rooney there in a friendly kind of way. I wonder would you care to help him. He's looking for an unfurnished room. I oh, don't be bothering the gentleman, Tim. No trouble at all. As a matter of fact, I happen to know the very place. Should suit all concerned. Mrs. O'Flynn, 25 Rathmines Terrace. Rathmines Terrace? Well, that's a bit out of my class. I mean, after all... You're as good a man as the next, Rooney. Give Mrs. O'Flynn my card and say I sent you. If you go and fix it now, during the break, we'll move you in this very night. Well, I couldn't go like this. Ah, come on into the back room and have a bit of a wash. I'll fix you up with some clothes. Yeah, then when you're finished, we'll pick you up on the corner and everyone will be satisfied, including the corporation. Are you sure you have it ready in time, Maura? We wouldn't be sending you to the altar in your shift, would we, now? Will you please try to stop talking like a peasant? Take it off and I'll soon have it finished. Sheila, come and give me a hand here. Doreen will be home for her lunch any minute. Coming? It's going to look lovely, Mother. There's nothing to be said against the material, that's certain. It was good of the McQuaid's to give more of the day from the shop, or she'd never have finished it in time. Wet the tea. Why shouldn't they give up the day off? She's been there for years, working for next to nothing. Hardly able to pay for her keep. I'm grateful to her anyway. Now, there's no need to be pitying her. Anything she does here is well repaid. She has a roof over her head, hasn't she? Maura? Leave that now and take this upstairs. I don't want the old devil coming down here. What are you doing? You know Grandfather can't eat crusts. He couldn't be tried. He's just lazy. Those teeth of his cost enough. For heaven's sake, Mother, don't give her any more jobs. Let her get on with my dress. You don't expect me to go dancing attendance on them, do you? Me? That never gets a civil word from either. After all, I've danced the pair of them. That story. Well, are you just getting up or just going to bed? I've just been fitting my wedding dress. It's going to look wonderful. Why, oh, she'll make a good enough job of it, I've no doubt. But I hope when I get married, my dress will come from a real dressmaker's. Will you listen to her? And where are you going to find this millionaire? No, don't let them any bickering. I've enough to worry me. What of the reception and the money it's going to cost? You get on with your lunch. I'll answer it. I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am, but I'm looking for a room. I'm sorry, this is not a lodging house. Uh, Mr. Doolan sent me. Mr. Doolan? He gave me this. Oh, tell me, Mr. Uh... Uh, Rooney. Just Rooney. Are you married, Mr. Rooney? I'm sorry. Uh, no, 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 I'm a single man. Come in, Mr. Rooney, come in. I'll show you the room. Will you come this way, please? You must understand that I've never done this sort of thing before. And I wouldn't be letting now. Only one of my daughters is getting married. And I'm giving her the furniture for our new home. She's going to live abroad, you know. So the room's already empty. This is it, Mr. Rooney. Well, it looks as though it would suit me fine. You're in regular employment, Mr. Rooney. Oh, yes, ma'am, yes. I am on the corporation. The corporation? Indeed, how interesting. It must be a great responsibility to help in the administration of a great city like Dublin. Ah, that's so, ma'am, that's so. But, you know, there's never a dull moment. As we say at the depot, you never know what's in the bin till the lid's off. <laughs> if shall we say 30 shillings a week, then? Well, that's, uh, that's a bit more than I've been paying up to now. You'll have the use of the kitchen and bathroom, of course. Oh, well, then I'll take it if it's agreeable to you. Oh, definitely. Mr. Doolan's recommendation is quite good enough for me. He's our family lawyer, you know. I've only one question, Mr. Rooney. Are you a drinking man? Ah. I'm despised for my moderation, Mrs. O'Flynn. That proves you're a good Christian man, Mr. Rooney. Like myself, 
pure in heart and pure in body, with a tongue that speaks no evil. Ah, yes, how few realize that drink not only poisons the flesh, but destroys the immortal soul. Well, it's even worse than you imagine, ma'am. For I'm told the stuff they sell nowadays ruts the boots off the barmen and corrodes the pipes they draw it out of. It's a great thing to meet someone who agrees with my principles, Mr. Rooney. Then I'll be moving in tonight. Tonight? Well, the room's empty and I'm ready, so why not? Well, I can see you're a man who knows his own mind, Mr. Rooney. Now, here's a week's rent in advance. And there's me hand to follow it. Well, uh, thank you. That's a cousin of ours, poor girl. We took her in when she was orphaned, you know. Ah, blood's thicker than water. How true. Charity begins at home. But how few practices. I'm sorry I can't invite you in to introduce you, Mr. Rooney. But we're at six and seven at the moment. What of the wedding and everything? If ever I remarry, I certainly won't go through all that fuss again. You're a winner, Mrs. O'Flynn. Yes, and I'm all alone in the world. Just that love. 
lovely old dog of yours. Come on now, sit down. And not another word till you've had your fill. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'd be darned. 
Well, it wasn't his fault, you know. He as good as told us what his job was. What are you going to do, Mother? Aren't you going to tell him to go? I don't know what to do. Legally, you haven't a dog's chance of getting him out. There's no law forcing a man to declare his occupation if he isn't asked. Now he's paid his rent, you've accepted it, and here he can stay. But the neighbors... Ah, the harm's done as far as the neighbors are concerned. You'll have to live it down. Oh, to think it was Mr. Doolan sent him. Why should Mr. Doolan recommend him? Ah, now you've put your finger on the spot. You know, there's more to this man than meets the eye. Doolan's far too cute a businessman ever to associate with anyone who wasn't a top-notcher in some way. He's a man I wouldn't like to cross. He's a man I can't afford to cross. Just you try and wait till your lease is up. He'll be down on you for the dilapidations to the house like a ton of bricks. It's no use. We've got to put up with that man. Look, you better go to him and talk to him and make sure no word of this gets out to Doolan. Oh, Mum, ah, hold your tongue, girl. Haven't I troubles enough? The Lord makes the back to fit the bird. I'll soon alter these for you. They'll look as good as new. This is very kind of you, but we better make sure whether I'm staying or not first. Oh, you mustn't take any notice of Doreen. Take a hold now. Stand on that chair. We'll try them for length. Sorry, I...
something far greater than that. But uh, I can't say anything about it until it's official, you know. Well, no. Do have another cup of tea, Mr. Rooney. Uh, and some biscuits. Mr. Rooney. Oh, you know, the old hurling gang gives you a great thirst, Mrs. Oakley. How is he, Bora? He's coming down. Don't let him come in here. Send him back. If he's a mind to come down, he's a right to, I suppose. They must be in the bathroom. Please go upstairs, Grandpa. Let me alone. Who is he? He's Mr. Rooney. He's staying here. Hey, what's that? Can't you speak up? My name's Rooney. You needn't shout, young fellow. I'm not there. What are you doing here? I'm the new lodger. Lodger? We don't want a lodger. Whose house is this anyway? It's mine, isn't it? I bought the lease. Mr. Rooney's not a lodger. He's taken the unfurnished room. He's a tenant. Same thing. Please go to your room, Grandpa. Don't you order me about him. Damn near frozen up there. What I want to know is about this young fellow. Please take no notice, Mr. Rooney. Talk, and I can hear you. You talk the hind legs off a donkey. Come along now. Uh, no, Mother, I don't want to go back. I want to sit here and smoke me pipe. Never even let you have any tobacco. or they'll have you hitched before you know your horses. Oh, if ever there was a wicked man in this world, he's the one. You don't know what I've been through with him all these years. I don't know what Mr. Rooney must think of us. Well, he seems a highly spirited old fellow. I'd be glad if you can get me a pouch back sometime. See who it is, Dorian. Oh, Mr. Rooney, your tea must be getting cold. Do let me get you another cup. Is uh, Mr. Rooney in? Yes. Oh, well, we're from the press. Can we see him? Well, come in. Thank you. In there. Mr. Rooney? Oh, my name's O'Keefe. Oh, what I want is your picture and your story. We've had a tip you're playing in the final. But it's not official yet. Oh, not from Doolin's as good as a wink from a blind donkey. Oh, your full name, please. Uh, James Ignatius Rooney. Now just sit there quiet and smoke your pipe, then I'll bring up your supper. Eh, uh, my darling. Eh, uh, you didn't manage to do any shopping today, did you? I clean forgot. Of course I did. Now, let me see. There's your digestive biscuit. Senna pods. Face flannel. Peppermints. I'm hard about me chest, Mulder. With a terrible cough on me. <coughs> Do you think this might help us? You're the grand smoker. You'd make a fortune at the border. You'd get holy water past the devil himself. <laughs> then you'd best take a drop now. There you are. And don't forget to sock a peppermint afterwards. Oh, she'll smell you a mile off. Well, thank you, Mr. 
Mr. Rooney. Oh, but Pat, what do you want? Uh, over here, by the Aspidist. Um, couldn't we uh, get someone with him just to make him look a bit interesting? Well, that's my dog. Uh, no uh, feminine to. Uh, what about uh, one of the ladies? Wesley. What about this lovely young creature here? You're not his fiance by any chance, are you? No, we're just good friends. Oh, fair enough. Now put your arm around. Look up at him and smile. That's it. Right, Pat? Oh, they've done you proud, Rooney, me boy. That's a lovely girl. You have your arm around. Who is she? That's the daughter of the house. Makes a bit of a change, Rooney. Your other conquests were all in a different age group. Hey, plenty of putting up the bands, Rooney. I'll put up your bands in a minute. Ha, 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 boys, I think he's born. Leave hey, him alone. <laughs> May the day soon come when the girl will marry Rooney. Oh, all I hope is she ups and makes a band on the day they ring out the wedding bells for Rooney. Oh, the Dublin will begin to have some peace and love. Rooney, oh, Rooney, oh, he set your heart to sing in the twinkle of an eye. Rooney, oh, Rooney, oh, the darling of the ladies is the Rooney, oh. <laughs> hey, Jamie, this fellow must have had a powerful forest.
Don't you know how the poor girl must feel? Sure. Sure, I didn't say anything at all. Of furniture. I assured anyone else to have them. Oh, it wasn't that. 
I'd have given it to the child willingly if she'd wanted it. It was the thought of anyone going behind my back, looking through my things. Do you think I'm trying to find excuses for myself? No, no. no I think you've just about reached the end of your tether. I'm worried about the owl fella, trying to do everything for everybody, you know. I, uh, I never rightly thanked you for doing me curtains. Same. I, I got this today. Would you like to have it? Thank you. It's so pretty. Uh, it's only an old thing. I think it's lovely. There. That suits you fine. You know, you ought to go out and enjoy yourself a bit. You're young yet. Young? Of course, you're not that old. I'm 28 and I feel 50. It's a bit late. But you've been very kind. Thank you again. Oh, his grandfather. Wanting to know if I've done any shopping. He likes a drop now and again. Will you take it to him? I don't want him to see I've been crying. Sure, sure. Oh, don't let anyone see you. Drink not only poisons the body, but destroys the immortal soul. Come in. She's all right now. She sent me in with the, uh, the shopping. Will you have one now? Take it. Oh, just a drop of water. Hey, steady now. You needn't to own it. I take it for me coffee, you know. I'll tell Mrs. O'Flynn that. For heaven's sake, not a word to that one. She'd have me parched for want of it. Sit down. Are they all gone down there? They're just going. You know, Sheila looked pretty in her wedding dress. I thought one time to see more in hers. There was a fella head over heels in love with her. It's a while ago now. He was desperate to marry her and take her off to America. But she wouldn't go. No, she wouldn't leave me at the mercy of that one. It never dawned on me till afterwards. I'll always hold it against myself. She was fonder of you than of him. Well, maybe so, maybe so. But what sort of a life is it meant for her? What is she now? Nurse to a sick old man and an unpaid slave to that one. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you spoke a true word down there when you said, talking won't alter things. Now, you're a fine young lad with a great heart. And I know if I asked you for the loan of five shillings, you wouldn't hesitate for a minute. Five shillings? Oh, take it easy, take it easy. You're chasing girls or backing horses or what? I'm past doing any of them things now, young fellow. More's the pity. But you can give it to the free heart, and you get it back maybe sooner than you think. Come on now, then, you good lad. Something I should be wanting, is there? No, thanks very much. Oh, yes, the peppermints. Listen, hurry on back to Moria and tell her I'm out of them. And get rid of that while you're there. That one is an old for whiskey, I'm telling you. One whiff of it and she's roaring and yelping like a pack of hounds on the scent of an old fox. 